Hello, and welcome to the Hempville CBD Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Cooey. I'm an entrepreneur in the cannabis industry with my business, Hempville CBD. This podcast is dedicated to educating you on CBD and how it can positively impact your life. Also, we'll feature professionals in the cannabis market and share their expertise in the marketplace. Join us on this enlightening journey that will enrich your appreciation of the dynamic cannabis marketplace. Follow us at HempfieldCBD.com, and as always, there's an open invitation to come visit us at the store in South Haven, Mississippi. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome to the Hempville CBD Podcast. My name is Ben Cooey, owner and operator of, Hemp- of the retail store Hempville CBD in South Haven, Mississippi, and the website HempfieldCBD.com. Across from me is a man that makes everything happen, Derek uh, Michaud. Michaud? Michaud, yes. There you go, sir. Uh, He's the reason the podcast exists, and uh, uh, let's get into it. Today, we're going to do things a little different. Uh, The past couple of episodes, we've talked about uh, the THC cannabinoids like Delta-8, Delta-9, THCA, and rightfully so. Those are the cannabinoids that are pushing the market. I mean, I would say about 85, 90% of my sales, both online and in store, have to deal with THC, some type of THC based product. But today we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about CBD and the non psychoactive cannabinoids within the hemp plant. Now, I know some people are listening and they're going, boring. Who, you know, who cares about that stuff? Well, actually, that stuff is very important. Uh, it's very good health wise. But they're the ones that started it all. I mean, they're the ones that are responsible, these non-psychoactive cannabinoids. uh, They're responsible for the market we have today, and and we'll get into that. Um, You know, and I'll punch in there. I'm a prime example of the one that doesn't want the psychoactivity. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's, there's a customer base out there that would appreciate that, you know? There is. I mean, you know, everybody likes the buzz, but... There, there is a large number of people out there that they either just don't want that buzz. They don't want that, that high feeling. Uh, they don't want to flunk a drug test at work. Uh, there are several reasons why they might not like it, uh, which, is, which is fine. That's why we have these non-psychoactive cannabinoids, and that's how this whole business segment got started. And, and we'll talk a little history here. Uh, in 1830, 150 years ago, we knew about these cannabinoids and the benefits health-wise that they uh, do as far as helping with uh, upset stomachs, nausea, p- uh, pain from arthritis, uh, de- you know, depression and sleep. We knew that back in 1830. However, in 1930, they came out with the, uh, I think it's the medical or the Marijuana Tax Act in 1930 outlawed marijuana and and i'm covering this real short there's a lot more intangibles i think that's fascinating though i didn't realize it went to the 1800s yes uh 1800s we knew about this you could buy products like this uh 1930 they uh, create the marijuana tax act outlaw marijuana Uh, but yet still uh, since a lot of these cannabinoids are found in the hemp plant which is not marijuana but it is a form of cannabis uh, still in the 50s and 60s, you could go into uh, a drugstore and find a lot of uh, products with these cannab- cannabinoids in it, whether they be tinctures or salves or, or lotions and well, stuff. Way like ahead that. of the time. Way ahead of the time. But what was happening in the 1930s? We, Prohibition. Pro, well, the reason the, medi- uh, the Marijuana uh, Tax Act was there, it was part of the purifying of America. You know, prohibition, no alcohol, we're not going to have any marijuana. Uh, So they outlawed all all of it, thinking we're going to be pure. But the other thing that was happening is that's when pharmaceuticals were becoming, they've always been a science, but they were becoming more of a a, the business of science. And uh, uh, the Rockefellers uh, backed a lot of it. And they would actually go to colleges and say, hey, you know, we were coming out of the Depression, and a lot of the colleges were about to fold during the Depression. And they'd say, look, we'll, We'll fund your college. We're going to give you millions of dollars. And in 1930, that was a lot of money. But what we want you to do is have a pharmaceutical program, the study of pharmaceuticals. And so the pharmaceutical industry funded universities and the study of that, rightfully so. I mean, it's their product. 
But in 1970, they came out with the Controlled Substance Act. This outlawed all of the can- cannabinoids. Even though in the 1930s they had the Marijuana Tax Act, we still had hemp-based cannabinoids and products competed with, uh, with over-the-counter medications from pharmaceuticals. In the 70s, they decided to wipe all of that out, make anything from cannabis, any cannabinoid, illegal. And from there, it was pharm- pharmaceuticals all the way. Were they threatened by this alternative to their pharmaceuticals? Is that part of it? You know, they're never going to say they're never going to say that because if they say that, that's going to make people say, "Well, if you were threatened by it, this must be a good thing." But follow the money. Yeah. And and, and when I tell this story, it's almost like it's almost like a mob story. This business, they did such a good job of eliminating any competition uh, that they might have in regards to what they're making. And that's exactly what they were doing over the years. Now, in the 70s, I'm a baby boomer. I was born in 68, grew up in the 70s, uh, you know, son of a doctor and a nurse. Uh, I I can tell you, as I grew up, it was like if I got hurt, if I had an injury, okay, what pill do I got to take? What what medicine do I need to cure this problem? And so we were kind of programmed, the baby boomers, we were programmed to just automatically think if I have a physical medical problem what medicine do i need to take to solve this problem and cannabis is bad oh yeah it's illegal for a reason oh my god that's no that's no good that's not good for you correct you know without understanding that you know it was legal for a long time you know you woke you you came into bad bad stigma bad bad correct and i will ruin your life I believe drugs are bad. I mean, if you get if you talk about fentanyl, meth, opioids, I, I think all that stuff is terrible. I'm not I'm not one of these people that think I think all drugs need to be well. That stuff is lethal. Yeah, That's it'll a big, kill you. Yeah, you know. Um, but we were lied to about the hemp and the marijuana as far as uh, what it does for the body. It's not all bad. Uh, but anyway, as we move forward, uh, as the baby boomers got older. In, in the early to mid 2000s, you know, we're all reaching our 40s and 50s, but we're seeing our parents uh, reaching their 70s and 80s, and they're on a ton of medication. I mean, like my mother was on 13 medications before she passed away. She passed away at 63, and my brother, the pharmacist, was like, these things are doing more harm than good. And we've discussed this before where some of that stuff is to offset other meds correct this, this med maybe hurts your kidney a little bit or liver and then oh all right now we have this other medicine to help combat that canceling each other out and correct it, and it's just a slippery slope like like my father said when i turned 50 if you can control it with diet and exercise do it because if you get on one pill he, he goes i guarantee you in six months you'll be on three and that's huge in the psych med world oh yeah oh uh, yeah with, with mental health so the baby boomers are looking around in the mid 2000s and they're seeing their parents on this. We're all reaching the age of where now our joints and bones and things are starting to wear out. And so we're feeling it too. But we're like, oh, they're, you know, I don't, I don't know about these pharmaceuticals. I don't want to get, I don't want to be like my parents and get on one pill and end up being on 13. So we started pushing our politicians to, legalize these non-psychoactive cannabinoids. And there we come up with the 2018 Farm Bill, which in short, it made uh, Delta 9 THC illegal, but opened up all those other cannabinoids for us to research and use. Now, and that's what where we have the market today. It outlawed Delta 9 THC, but there are several different forms of THC. Some of them are non-psychoactive. Some of them are psychoactive. Delta 8 THC is psychoactive it's just cbd which has been aged because it will turn into that thca is a non-psychoactive compound but when exposed to heat it becomes thc which is psychoactive so there were a lot of loopholes within that 2018 farm bill that's what got us the market today that we have now that's important because it's not about when you look at the market people are like oh what they're doing is just we're, we're having a, a secret way of having recreational marijuana. No. What we're doing is creating an alternative medical drug market 
as opposed to pharmaceuticals. Now, that's important because listen to what I'm about to tell you, and everybody knows this, but listen. This alternative drug market with these hemp-based cannabinoids, they are all natural, non-addictive, and little to no side effects. Now, when we talk about the problems why people use these cannabinoids, like depression, anxiety, stress, sleep disorders, uh, aches and pains throughout the body, you can go to pharmaceuticals. You can go to over-the-counter drugs such as ibuprofen, which is very toxic to your liver, not good. A lot of people drank alcohol simply to take care of these things so they could sleep at night or uh, to, to quit thinking about what the stress of their day. Alcohol is so non-addictive, right? Yeah, and alcohol is extremely <laughs> addictive. The right. pharmaceuticals, certain pharmaceuticals are extremely addictive or not good for your liver. So this alternative drug market, I mean, are you kidding me? An alternative medicine that is non-addictive, all natural, little to no side effects. Who? Do, how can you say no to that? Look, I spent 11 weeks in rehab because I, I quit drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's always going to come into play when I, when I talk about cannabis. But everyone in that rehab with me was street drugs, alcohol, Oxycontin, Percocet, you know, all that stuff sold over the counter, you know, prescription, legal. Correct. No one was in there for a cannabis addiction. And all of that legal stuff you just named is addicted. Big time. Big, big like, time. And I, I've met people that look like, a, you know, that could be a teacher. Yep. That could be your insurance agent. But on heroin. <laughs> yeah. Because they can't afford the, the medical stuff anymore. So they have to go to the street because the heroin matches their pill addiction. Crazy. And, and you know, he was probably a seventh grade middle school teacher like me. Because I can tell you, after teaching seventh graders for nine years, I love the job, but it is crazy down all day, all yeah. day long. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all of those are highly addictive. And so let's talk about CBD because that's the most popular non-psychoactive cannabinoid. CBD is all natural. It's a non-psychoactive cannabinoid. It deals with relaxing you, calming you down. It helps with inflammation and pain in the joints. And even though it's non-psychoactive, it does change brain cognition, and that might concern people, but I'm not talking about brain cognition. Usually when we think of brain, changing brain cognition, we're thinking about being drunk, being high, being under the influence of something that usually is not a good thing because you're kind of not in control of yourself. Yeah, you lose your inhibitions. Correct. CBD does not do that. It's, it's not going it, to – CBD can't get you high. You can't get you drunk or anything like that. But the way it changes brain cognition is your brain, if you think about it, your brain is getting millions of bits of information every second of the day. A lot of the information it's receiving isn't even stuff you're thinking about, like your heart beating, breathing, uh, just moving your arm left or right. I mean, it's all controlled by your brain, uh, and you're not even having to think about it. Not to mention all the things at work or in your your uh, family life, that the information you're getting there and the stress involved. So as your brain is getting all this information, it's processing it. As it's processing it, it is uh, affecting emotions. That's where stress comes in. That's where anxiety comes in. All of that is controlled through the endocannabinoid system. You really cannot understand how CBD and these cannabinoids work unless we discuss the endocannabinoid system in your body, which most people don't even, they'll say, I've never heard of that. Didn't even know I had one. It's, it's half of the puzzle piece. Correct. That allows CBD to, as I've learned through you now, that accepts the CBD. And it's a natural part of your body accepting natural Correct. ingredients, Correct. if you will. So before you can understand CBD, <clears throat> let's talk about the endocannabinoid system. And you, you described it perfectly. The endocannabinoid system is the manager of the body. It's the brain's manage the brain's making all the decisions. The endocannabinoid system is managing it. And, and we'll get into that. But let's talk about the name itself, which is kind of what you just described. Endocannabinoid system. 
These compounds like CBD, CBG, THC, all of them, they're cannabinoids. Your body was made to take these natural uh, cannabinoids naturally. I mean, they, they, it's a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. So you got to ask yourself, is that by accident or was that done on purpose? And I'm a, you know, I'm a believer that God has given us everything on this earth to survive. You know, the cure for cancer, it's out there. It's on this earth somewhere. We just hadn't found it. Or maybe we found it and we're just not looking for it. But And we'll talk about that. But, yeah, when I look at it and say, hey, we have a natural system in our body to take these cannabinoids, this is a good thing. So, and if you believe God provided everything, I think these cannabinoids are a piece of that puzzle. I don't think they're the full puzzle, but I do think they're a piece of it. Now, the other thing I look at and the baby boomers looked at, and this is what pushed the 2018 farm bill is there are not a lot of cures for stuff. We, we do a lot of research and I'm not talking bad about the research doctors. Thank God for them. They have saved millions of lives, but I think they're not aiming at the right target. What I mean by that is the target is to find cures. But who's paying the research scientists? The pharmaceutical companies. So really the target for them is find a cure with the products we can make because we, we got to be able to make the product. But here's, here's the key. We don't find cures. We find ways to manage an illness over a course of a lifetime. And the reason for that, you can ask any doctor. Every doctor will tell you there's no money in a cure. Right. I mean, we all think the cure, whoever discovers the cure for cancer is going to be the richest person in the world. No, you're going to put your business out of business. And the reason why is because if you find a cure for cancer, the patient is a one-time patient. Here, buy these pills. You're cured. Good. Repeat. Repeat. Business. Yeah. Repeat business is the key. If I can cure you, I'll never see you again. But if I can find medicines that can let you manage that illness for the next 20 to 30 years, and we can add to it, instead of you just taking one with the side effects, I'll end, you'll end up being on five or six or maybe 10 or so on. And every person's like that. As a business, I'm in, I'm in the money. Mm-hmm. And so you got to follow the money. And I look at that and I'm like, okay, there are no cures. This is a natural substance. Uh, it's from the earth. Our body's willing to take it. This is, I'm on the right track with something. Now let's talk about your endocannabinoid system. The brain's uh, manager of the body. What the endocannabinoid system is, is it's a system in your body of receptors and enzymes. It controls or manages every other system in your body, and your body is full of systems. you got respiratory system, immune system, reproductive system, nervous system, uh, skeletal, uh, skeletal system, muscular system, system, and it just goes on. Well, the endocannabinoid system manages all these systems. Its job is to keep these systems in balance. And it releases chemicals and enzymes uh, through the receptors. And what that does is it sparks emotion. It's, it, it sparks. It also creates a feeling of pain through the nervous system. When CBD and these cannabinoids enter your body, they attach to these receptors. And what they will do is... Uh, the emotions that you get as your brain is getting all this information every millisecond of the day, it will tamper down those emotions. That's why your stress and anxiety is lowered because the CBD is blocking it. That is why your heart rate is lowered because the CBD is blocking the emotions that would get that heart rate up. As far as pain, CBD uh, helps with, with pain. Inflammation. Inflammation, but differently you know, a lot of the creams that we saw in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even today, very menthol-y. Menthol is not a bad thing, but menthol numbs the area, and so therefore you don't feel as much pain. It's masking the pain. It's not solving any problems. It's just numbing that area to cover it up. CBD and these cannabinoids actually... The reason they work so well with inflammation is when they get into the bloodstream, they actually remove some of the compounds that deal with causing the inflammation. And as they're removing those compounds, the inflammation 
of course, is going down and you're not feeling as much pain. But they're solving a problem versus masking a problem. And that's a huge difference just right there. That is how CBD works in your body. It's through the endocannabinoid system. Also, illnesses, a lot of illnesses like cancer, move throughout your body by using the endocannabinoid system. CBD, there are medical studies out there that say CBD will slow that growth down. Sometimes it might isolate it to where it doesn't grow, but I don't want to give anybody false hope. But there are medical studies out there that say it it will slow that growth, uh, which is always a good thing because if you can keep an illness isolated like cancer, that's but you never want it to spread. Right now, in the CBD is just one of hundreds of cannabinoids in these plants. There are other cannabinoids too. Some of the the main ones that people might hear about, but in our store, we find out a lot of people don't know about them, CBG and CBN. CBG is what's known as the mother compound of the plant. Every compound, all those hundreds of compounds within the plant, they are all pulled from CBG to be formed. That's why it's called the mother compound. It's, just, it's stronger than CBD. CBN is a compound. It's a natural compound to calm you down, helps you with sleep, make, will make you a little drowsy. Uh, so there's, we're finding out it's not just like a, a one cannabinoid will fix everything that as certain cannabinoids have certain properties within them that, that pinpoint certain problems. Uh, and we talk about, you know, you CBD is the most popular, but is all CBD the same? Oh, CBD is CBD. No, not all CBD is the same. And I'm talking more or less products. And this is what I mean. When you walk into a store, there is CBD with no THC in it and then CBD with a little THC in it. Now, the THC is not enough to get you high, but the difference between the two is this. Broad spectrum CBD. What that is, is one one cannabinoid CBD is in that product. Now, think of of me trying to fight you. All right, you're not going to punch back. Mm-hmm. All right, you're just I could say, never do that, Ben. <laughs> if I had to fight you with one finger, I might do a little damage, but I'm not going to do much damage. But as I add more fingers to the, to the mix, those five fingers can, can now work together and form a fist and create a very powerful punch. Cannabinoids work the same way. When you have broad spectrum, you have one cannabinoid. When you have full spectrum, You have multiple cannabinoids, and so they feed off each other so you get a little better uh, result. That's why that little bit of THC is in there. It's called non-detectable THC. Uh, They say, you know, it's not going to make you high, and it's not, but it helps magnify that CBD and the other cannabinoids within uh, within that mix, and so you get a better effect. Now, even though they say it's non-detectable and it's not going to make you high, which is all true, Drug testing. <clears throat> oh, you can pass a drug test with this. Nobody can ever guarantee you're going to pass a drug test because they never know what that drug test is testing for. And even though it's a microcosm of THC that's in there that probably is not going to get picked up on a drug test, over time it builds up in your system and it could eventually pop on a drug test. Now, doctors have told us, look, we can look at a drug test and tell if you're taking CBD or smoking weed Because if you're taking CBD and you pop with a little THC, the CBD is going to be off the chart. The THC is going to be very low. When it's reversed and the CBD is low and the THC is high and they're telling us, all I do is take CBD. No, you're taking something else. You're probably taking a THC-based product or smoking weed because that's what the results are showing. With the broad spectrum and full spectrum, what we're starting to see in the beginning, we just had CBD only, broad spectrum, CBD with a little THC, full spectrum. Well, you can have full spectrum products without the THC. All you do is mix in the other cannabinoids, such as a CBG or a CBN, and we're starting to see that now. And we're starting to see, in the beginning, we used to have CBD gummies. Now we're coming out with CBD gummies that affect pain, CBD gummies that will pinpoint calm or sleep. And what that is, is they're being mixed with specific cannabinoids, such as with the pain, it's CBD and CBG. That's a great combination. I I can tell you we got tinctures and gummies with that mixture in it 
the customers that buy them love them said the results that they got from that was more than what they expected we do have sleep gummies and they're really two main form of sleep sleep gummies out there on the market one is cbd with melatonin in it what the, what the cbd will do is uh It'll have a little melatonin, but the CBD will amplify that in your system. And my ki- and this is safe to take. My kids take it uh, when they have exams and, and they got to go to bed early. They'll take it within 30 minutes. They're out. Mm-hmm. Um, great. I've definitely done the melatonin thing, too. But some, yeah. pe- some people complain about melatonin saying it gives them bad dreams. Well, I mean, <laughs> yes. if you're having bad dreams, you're not going to do a lot of sleeping or you're going to wake up more stressed than you were when you went to bed. Yeah. So they started to take CBD and mix it with the natural compound CBN. And it has the same effect. It's just all natural and you're not dealing with the melatonin. The difference between the two products is the melatonin gummies will be a little cheaper simply because that's injected into the product where with the CBN, they got to extract it out of the plant and then inject it. So there, it's a little more complicated. But the, you're paying for the quality. I oh, yeah. We can all understand that. And that, that melatonin version might help with someone's budget in their world. Oh, yeah. And still work. Just, you know, that's what you do. You, you try to provide options. Yeah, you, and that's the whole key. And that's the key with, you think about it, from the 70s all the way through 2018, Medically, we weren't given a lot of options. It was pharmaceuticals all the way. Now, there are 100 pharmaceutical companies, but it's still the same industry. And what I love about this industry is it's creating a a separate industry away from the pharmaceuticals to give people that option. And when your option is uh, addictive side effects, not natural, versus all natural, no no to little side effects, and non-addictive, to me, that's an easy choice. When I was a school teacher, like I said, I quit my job. A job I was in teaching for nine years, loved it. And once I discovered all this, I said, this is a no-brainer. This has been kept from us for 50 years or longer. That now that it's coming out, this is a great market to be in. So I went to my principal. It was in May. And I said, look, I know I've signed my contract for next year, but uh, – and I'll show up because I signed that contract. But if you can find, we needed a baseball coach. And uh, I said, but if you can find a baseball coach that can teach history, I'll gladly step down. And And I really helped my principal out because she had a coaching position open, but she didn't have a teaching position open. And if you're a coach, you also got to teach a class. So she was kind of stuck there with that hire. And so me stepping out and saying, look, I'm willing to step down and go into this business it frees you up to do what you need to do is a perfect match. And and I've been, I miss teaching, but I, I love going to work every single day. I did teaching too, but this is just a whole different type of love because I see the potential of it. And I can see you pulling from your teacher experience on this podcast. You're, you're great at laying this stuff out for us. <laughs> you're teaching us, man. Yeah, I, well, that is... We do that in the store, and all this podcast is doing is taking what we do in the store and we're putting it out on the airways. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what we do when you walk in as a customer is teach. And that's part of how uh, we got our name, and, and we'll get into that at the end. But there is a new product on the market. Now, it's not non-psychoactive. They're these mushroom gummies. What these mushroom gummies are is they are psychoactive a little bit. They're not like the THC. It's kind of an in-between the THC psychoactive and the CBD non-psychoactive. The mushroom gummies are more, you're going to feel a little bit, but you're really just going to be chill all day long. You're going to be extremely productive. It's not going to put you under the influence the way THC is where you're just really relaxed. It's just a very mild, Mm -hmm. it's like CBD with a mild little kick to it. Those are starting to hit the market. And the reason those were developed was because the the industry thinks Delta eight will be deemed illegal. The next farm bill coming out uh, next year. And the reason they think Delta eight will be illegal is it's categorized as a synthetic drug. And I think the, the way they categorize it is weak because they, they, the way they define synthetic is, well, they take the CBD out of the plant and then they CO2 gas it to turn it into, they age it real quick with CO2 gas to eight, turn it into Delta-8 and make products out of it. 
well, that's laboratory. That's synthetic. Well, how do you think your bananas turn yellow? Yeah. I mean, that's how banana, bananas are green. They say CO2 gas them to get yellow. Or do you think they squeezed a potato or a corn cob to get that alcohol in the, in the liquor store? No, it had to go through a, a process to get to that product. But yeah. you don't deem that synthetic. And the other thing we hear is, oh, well, you know, these marijuana is a gateway drug. I've heard, like I said, I've heard of Alcoholics Anonymous and groups having to meet to to be able to get off that addictive drug. I don't know. I I, I don't know of any group, professionally or non professionally, where it's like Cannabis Anonymous. Yeah. You know, well, we, alcohol was my gateway. It's a lot of people's gateway. You know, and I have a drug history. We can get into on, <coughs> on another day. On another day. But alcohol was that gateway, and to the Delta Eight, you know, it's unfortunate because that is my go to. You know, I've found what works great for me, and it's yeah. that. Yeah, and I, and I can remember as a child in the 70s, every parent drank. Every parent drank. Every dad came home and had a drink at the end of the day, and on the weekends might have been somewhere with the rest of the fathers playing golf or playing poker or just hanging out. You know, I look at the problems they have now when they're older. Uh, a lot of it is due to drinking. A lot of them had, you know, marriages were broken up over it and uh other things that weren't good happen, and we always call the THC a marriage saver because we've had, cust- <laughs> we've had customers come in our store saying they were on the verge of divorce because all they did was argue, and they started taking Delta 8 or Delta 9 THC, and now they come home from work, pop in a gummy, and within an hour, they're just looking at each other going, hey. <laughs> and, yeah. and it allows them to vent about their day, and the venting in irritating the person listening to it. They're just like, oh, I get it. I get well, it. the alcohol can make you vent, but in a very gr- aggressive, oh, yeah. you know, toxic way. Well, like the, off, the, the p- retired police officer that came in our store, I've been to a thousand domestic violence calls. All of them had to deal with alcohol. Yes. I've never gone to a domestic violence call where they were so high they were beating the crap out of each other. You, he goes, mm-hmm. it's usually the complete opposite. He goes, those are the easiest people. Yeah to deal with. So just in closing, you know, we now kind of know a little bit about the non-psychoactive drugs, how important they are. They should be part of your regular health system, even if you don't have problems, because these like CBD, it helps protect the inner lining of your, your, the vessels in your body, the nervous system, the, the, the vessels of the nervous system and the vessels that carry your blood, the blood vessels. It helps protect that inner lining and make it stronger, and that's always a good thing. The uh, I read an article early this morning. Japan, very conservative country. Like if you get caught with these cannabinoids, you could face seven years in jail. But in their house, their bottom house, they passed a bill that they now want these cannabinoids to be put into uh, medical drugs. O- only for medical drugs only. I mean – that's a conservative country sitting there saying, look, there is medical beneficial benefits to this, and we want to have, be able to open that up for our people as well. So the market's changing, and I, the only thing I worry about with it is the marijuana market does not like us. They, they're kind of like the pharmaceuticals. We're competing. We're the secondary market because you don't need a dispensary card or anything to walk into our, our store based on the cannabinoids that we sell. But they they mirror image the medical the medical marijuana cannabinoids or the recreational cannabinoids, and they're coming from better growers of those plants. That our market's beating their market, or it's giving them a run for their money if we're not beating them, depending on your region. And so they want to put us out of business. They want to make everything illegal so that they can only sell these products. The pharmaceutical companies the same way. They want to put us all out of business too. So that's this alternative market. Either they're going to try to outlaw it or they're going to do what Japan's doing and start infusing these cannabinoids into their pharmaceuticals to uh, get the benefits as well. But that tells you that we're not snake oil. We're not just blowing smoke, that this is the real deal. And this is a piece of that all natural puzzle that if you're not looking at, you need to be looking at. And the one thing that stands out in my head is when a doctor told me, well, how come they can't find a cure for it? Well, there's no money in a cure. 
And I look about, I look around today and, and that repeats in my head over and older. The older I get and the more I look around, there are no cures. There's just medications. I can remember being a kid. I think there were maybe four uh, vaccines I had to take as a kid. Now kids today take 20 something and we're sitting around going, why is uh, autism going up? Well, it, you know, there's a link that people are starting to, to say, hey, maybe there's a link between all these vaccines. And I some have definitely these, heard that, too. Some of these medical conditions our kids are getting, like allergies or, or autism, or, or I mean, the list goes on and on. Nothing's been proven, but uh, you start connecting the dots, and that's where it's going to lead you. Even if you're healthy, you need to look into these things. Even if you don't want to, you know, get the high, the non-psychoactive cannabinoids, I'm getting tongue-tied, <laughs> that we've talked about today are hugely beneficial for you. And you can say, oh, I take vitamins. And vitamins are good. But guess who owned the vitamin companies? Pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceutical companies. That's exactly right. So you need to look into these. And if you... Or like, where do I look into them? You can, you know, Google them for sure. You can always go to our website, hempfieldcbd.com. It's a retail store. Yes, you can buy things off there, but you don't have to buy anything. You can get on there and we post blogs and information to help educate the customer. Uh, you can come into our store and our employees, if I'm not there, any of the employees I got can help do the same thing. Uh, but you have to educate yourself because it's not like this education is – it's out there for the public, but the public has to find it. Nobody really wants to bring it to you because, one, a lot of people don't know, and, two, a lot of people are going to lose money over it. The more the public finds out about it, the more they're transitioning to this secondary market, and that's hurting other companies. So, uh, hey, we'd love for you to come by the store. We'd love to hear from you. It's all about helping people, and that's kind of how we got our name, Hempville CBD. Hemp is an acronym. Help educate more people. And that's what we do. VIL is simply, you heard we're all, we, we all live in the same village. Okay. We're all living on planet Earth. And I hate to be like a kumbaya guy, but, you know, help educate more people. We all live in the same village. If this is a better product, a better way, let us try to help you out. Because it's all about, the reason people walk through our doors is because they have an issue. They, they are, they're searching for some type of relief, wh whether it be mental or physical. And if you can do that, rather than getting them on something that's addictive, getting them on something that's going to solve one problem but cause another. I mean, I can't tell you how many uh, drug commercials I see where they say, hey, we're going to solve this problem for you. But part of the side effect is suicidal thoughts. Well, I mean, no one wants that. You know, my stomach hurts. I'm not thinking of, of suicide. If if I take this medicine, my stomach's going to feel better. But then I'm thinking about suicide. That's even a worse situation. But I hear that all the time. Or I hear things like, and not trying to be gross, explosive diarrhea. Who wants that? When you see a, a drug ad on TV, they have to give you all the possibilities, right? Correct. You know, and those are all included. And here's psych meds, Prozac. Oh, yeah. Look at San Francisco. You know, uh, and, <clears throat> and I'm not knocking. I take a psych med. Again, discussion for another day. Well, they're good for. Right. But but part of when they have to list out, probably for legal reasons, they have oh, to. Oh, yeah. Of course they do. Suicidal thoughts is, is attached to all of the psych meds. If you have schizophrenia, you know, anxiety stuff, THC helps tamper that down. It relaxes you. But if you have an illness like schizophrenia, T THC is the worst thing you can take. It's going to inflame that even more. Uh, but if you take a non-psychoactive cannabinoid, it's going to block mm -hmm. those receptors and calm you down. Then it goes back to education. It, it all goes Teaching back. Teaching people this stuff. Correct. And that's one of the things we're trying to do. So I, I thank everybody for listening to the podcast. Please continue to listen. Look at some of our back episodes that we've done. Uh, you'll, you'll get episode one. We'll talk about the story of what got me into the business and got me to quit my job as a teacher and some of the events that happened in my life that got me into this. You know, some people are in this business to just make a lot of money as quickly as they can and, and get out. Uh, we're in the business for the long haul of, hey, we want to create that alternative to pharmaceutical market so that 
hey, if your kid gets hurt or if you have an issue, you have a choice. And I and hey, I knew I was onto something. My principal at the school that I taught at was the preacher's wife. All right. Very conservative. Her and I were on two different wavelengths too. She she we as far as teaching methods, usually uh there was some friction there because I was old school, she was new school. Uh, but I knew I was on to something when I started learning about these products and I started to get a reputation for knowing about these products. Her kid had her daughter ran track, but she had scoliosis. And the principal, the preacher's wife, came to me and said, Hey, my daughter doesn't want to take any of these prescription medications. She's afraid the painkiller she could get addicted to. Is there anything that's all natural in your store that you could take that she could possibly look at or take? And at that point, I knew, oh, we got something. I yes. mean, because people, this is a market people are wanting. They just don't know much about it. They're wanting that education, and that's the reason for the show. So, thank you for for having me uh, have this show, and thanks for those listening. And we will talk to you next week. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd appreciate it if you took a minute to subscribe, rate, review, and follow us at HempfieldCBD.com. This increases the reach to more people who are trying to navigate through the changing cannabis market and its products so that we can create a more knowledgeable consumer. Take a screenshot and tag me in your social stories to friends. It means the world to me to know that this podcast has positively helped you and that we get to be a part of your journey. Thank you, and until next time, here's to a better life.